Metallica stands as one of the most iconic and influential bands in the history of metal music. With 11 studio albums, each offering a unique blend of aggression, melody, and lyrical depth, ranking them is a challenging, thrilling task. While there are no bad albums in Metallica's discography, some undoubtedly shine brighter than others. I won't include live albums, compilations, cover and collaboration albums, so let's get started. Number 11 is eighth studio album, St. Anger, released on June 5, 2003. It was the last Metallica album released through Elektra Records and the final collaboration between Metallica and longtime producer Bob Rock. It is a significant departure from their previous works, both in sound and style. The album received mixed reviews from critics and fans alike, with opinions ranging from praising its raw energy to criticizing its production and lack of traditional song structures. It was an album that needed to get Metallica back on their thrash metal roots, especially after Load and Reload albums but with no solos on the album and departure of bass player Jason Newsted. I think this is the weakest album of the band. My favorite songs on the album are Frantic, St. Anger, and The Unnamed Feeling. Number 10 is seventh studio album Reload released on November 18, 1997 via Elektra Records produced by Bob Rock. It is a polarizing album among fans and critics. Reload released as a follow-up to Load continues Metallica's exploration into a more diverse musical landscape. Following the commercially successful but controversial Load album, this album continues the band's exploration of alternative rock and blues influences, while still retaining elements of their trademark heavy metal sound. As many of metalheads, I prefer old-school Metallica, so I am not a fan of Load and Reload, but there are some pretty good songs on both albums, and some songs should be B-sides. My favorite songs on Reload album are Fuel, Devil's Dance, and The Unforgiven 2. Number 9 sixth studio album Load released on June 4, 1996 by Elektra Records produced by Bob Rock. It is a significant departure from their earlier thrash metal sound, embracing a more diverse range of influences including alternative rock, blues, and hard rock. Some longtime fans criticized the band's shift towards a more mainstream sound and the abandonment of their thrash metal roots. However, the album was commercially successful, reaching number one on the Billboard 200. It is very hard to choose between Load and Reload, especially if you know that Reload sounds a bit more to traditional Metallica sound, but I think Load has some great songs as Ain't My Bitch, the house Jack built until it sleeps. King Nothing and Bleeding Me, but I never get into some stuff from the album. Number eight, Death Magnetic ninth studio album released on September 12, 2008, through Warner Brothers Records produced by Rick Rubin. It is significant return to their thrash metal roots after a period of experimentation with different styles in the 1990s and early 2000s. Death Magnetic is characterized by its intense energy, aggressive riffs, and complex song structures reminiscent of Metallica's early work. While some praise the return to a more organic sound compared to their previous album, Saint Anger, others criticize the compressed audio mastering, which led to a somewhat distorted sound on certain tracks. I think Death Magnetic is a great album, my favorite songs are That Was Just Your Life, Broken, Beat and Scarred, The Day That Never Comes, All Nightmare Long, and Judas Kiss. Number 7 10th studio album Hardwired to Self-Destruct released on November 18, 2016 by the band's record label Blackened Recordings, produced by Greg Fiddleman. It is their first studio album in eight years since Death Magnetic, sixth consecutive studio album to debut at number one on the U.S. Billboard 200 selling 291,000 album equivalent units in its first week. The album has aggressive riffing, intricate compositions, and a blend of old-school thrash metal elements with modern production techniques. Spit Out the Bone, the closing track on the album, stands out as the best Metallica song they wrote since the Black Album and critical highlight of the album. The song is a powerhouse of thrash metal energy, showcasing Metallica's ability to deliver intense, fast-paced music with precision and aggression. There are some great songs on the album. Hardwired, Atlas Rise, Now That We're Dead, Moth Into Flame, Dream No More, and Halo On Fire. Number six is the latest, 11th studio album, 72 Seasons. It is released on April 14, 2023, by their own record label, Blackened Recordings. 72 Seasons was produced by Greg Fiddleman, who produced the band's previous studio album, Hardwired, to self-destruct, 2016. 72 Seasons marks another powerful entry in the band's legendary career. The album showcases Metallica's signature blend of thrash and heavy metal, while also exploring new thematic depths. It is well received, with many praising its blend of classic and modern Metallica elements. Fans appreciate the band's ability to evolve while staying true to their roots. The album has been noted for its emotional depth and the band's continued relevance in the metal scene. 
Even there are no ballads on the album. This record had some great stuff as 72 seasons. Shadows Follow, Screaming Suicide, You Must Burn, Lux Eterna, If Darkness Had a Sun, Room of Mirrors, and Enamorata. Overall, this album is great. Number 5, Kill Em All, debut studio album released on July 25, 1983, through the independent label Megaforce Records. It is produced by Paul Curcio and John Zazula. The album introduced a raw, faster, and more aggressive style. The production is raw, which adds to the album's ferocious and unpolished charm. Key elements include James Hetfield's gritty vocals, Lars Ulrich's frenetic drumming, Kirk Hammett's piercing guitar solos, and Cliff Burton's innovative bass lines. Over the years, it has been recognized as a classic and a crucial piece of metal history. Critics and fans alike praise its unrelenting speed, intricate guitar work, and the youthful intensity that Metallica brought to the table. All songs are great, but I will mention The Four Horsemen, Motor Breath, Jump in the Fire, Whiplash, Phantom Lord, and Seek and Destroy. Number four, and Justice for All, the fourth studio album released on August 25th, 1988, by Elektra Records, produced by Fleming Rasmussen. This album marked a significant evolution in Metallica's sound and lyrical themes, showcasing a more complex and progressive approach compared to their earlier work. The album is known for its intricate compositions and extended song lengths, tracks like One, Blackened, and the title track, and Justice for All, feature multiple tempo changes, complex rhythms, and intricate guitar work. The production of the album has been a point of controversy among fans and critics. The bass guitar, played by Jason Newsted, is notoriously low in the mix, which has been a subject of debate and criticism. Despite this, the album's raw and abrasive sound contributes to its intense and aggressive atmosphere. The best songs on the album for me are Blackened and Justice for All, One Harvester of Sorrow. Instrumental to live is to die and dire's eve, but all songs are extremely good. Number three, self-titled album Metallica, commonly known as the Black Album, released on August 12, 1991, by Elektra Records, produced by Bob Rock. It is a departure from the complex thrash metal of their earlier works to a more polished and accessible sound, broadening their appeal to a wider audience. Production is clean and powerful, with a strong emphasis on the rhythm section, the sound is characterized by heavy, crunchy guitar riffs, solid bass lines, and crisp drum work. My first connection with Metallica was back in 1992, when I was 12 year old. Hearing Sad But True Song, it attracted me a lot, and if I made this list a couple of years ago, this would be my best Metallica album. Now I think some albums are a bit better than this one. Except mentioned Sad But True Song, this album has a lot of great songs as Enter Sandman, The Unforgiven, Wherever I May Roam, through the never and nothing else matters. Number two second studio album ride, The Lightning, released on July 27, 1984, by the independent record label Megaforce Records, produced by Fleming Rasmussen. It is widely regarded as a seminal work in the thrash metal genre. This album marked a significant step forward for the band, showcasing their growing musical prowess and songwriting maturity. The album combines aggressive thrash metal with more melodic and complex elements, demonstrating the band's musical growth. The production quality of Ride the Lightning is a significant improvement over Kill Em All, with a clearer and more balanced mix. Overall, Ride the Lightning is a landmark album that showcases Metallica's evolution from raw thrash metal to a more nuanced and sophisticated sound. Its combination of powerful riffs, complex compositions, and thought-provoking lyrics make it a timeless classic in the metal genre. The difference between this and my best Metallica album are very small and it wouldn't be a mistake if I placed Ride the Lightning as my best. Ride the Lightning has incredible songs like Fight Fire with Fire, Ride the Lightning, For Whom the Bell Tolls, Fade to Black, Escape and Creeping Death. This album is pure perfection. Number 1. Master of Puppets The third studio album released on March 3, 1986, by Elektra Records, produced by Fleming Rasmussen. It was the band's final album to feature bassist Cliff Burton, who died in a bus accident in Sweden during the album's promotional tour. Master of Puppets is often hailed as one of the greatest heavy metal albums of all time. It represents a peak in the band's early career, both creatively and commercially, and has had a lasting impact on the metal genre. Technical proficiency is on full display, with tight, aggressive performances from all members. The album's sound is both polished and heavy, balancing clarity with the raw energy of Metallica's performances. Master of Puppets stands as a pinnacle of Metallica's early career and a defining moment in heavy metal history. Its combination of technical mastery, powerful themes, and innovative songwriting make it a timeless classic that continues to resonate with fans and musicians alike. 
There is no bad song on the album, and for me, this is Metallica's best studio album. This album is a masterpiece. Leave your thoughts and your ranking in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more metal content and unboxing adventures.